Um, we're going to talk a little bit about reactive content and a couple of ways how to how to implement that into an agency. Okay. First of all, before we get started, does everybody understand what reactive content really is and how to define that? And say us. Like you guys in Panama, you're doing a really good job in reactive content. And why don't you define that for us? Como estar viendo siempre el feed de Twitter, de lo que está hablando la gente. Y dos, nuestros propios feeds. Nos ponemos a buscar más. ¿Qué está hablando la gente? Entonces la gente habla de, de Chicago, cualquier cosa, ahí estamos. Y otro que nos, nos da como mucha fuerza fue haber hecho un grupo de Connect, donde hay 50 personas que están pensando a ver cómo nos mueven para que hagamos un post de React Content. Entonces eso hace que todo el mundo esté pendiente de eso. Es una parte del upsell que se puede hacer con un cliente. Es decirle, listo, yo le doy un Connect. Nos vamos a sentar, va a estar, no sé, la que parte de creatividad, su community. Eh. ¿Qué es un conecto? ¿Ah? ¿Qué es un conecto? Ahora es un grupo, realmente es un grupo en Facebook privado, donde están todas las, digamos, los stakeholders que están involucrados en el proyecto. Entonces ponemos al cliente, ponemos a los creativos, ponemos a, no sé, la gente de comunicación de la marca para que nos pueda aprobar si está bien o no, que esa fue una, una nueva persona que entró ya que nos dice, vea, usted sí puede hablar de Messi, pero lo puede hacer de esta manera, no lo puede hacer de esta manera. Y ya con eso realmente es un tema más, que, más de motivación y de, y de estar detrás de. Siempre están pasando las cosas y siempre están llegando nuestros propios feeds. Así nosotros no estemos en México, eh, encontramos cosas para México que son tendencia mundial. Okay. Entonces, why, is, why is it, I'm, I'm sorry, Leo, Quería complementar un poquito con él con temas como Hyperx, que son de pronto <coughs> un poquito más de nicho, que son un poquito más especializadas. Eh, por ejemplo, lo que nosotros hemos llegado a hacer y, 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 y creo que es también una invención de Valentina que, que es muy disciplinada con eso, es que ha creado como una especie de listas en, 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 en Twitter donde solamente tiene eh, influenciadores importantes de la industria, eh, gamers desde Argentina hasta México y eso nos ha, nos ha ayudado a cruzar patrones y cada vez que se crean como esas tendencias que para nosotros que estamos en el día a día, nos, que no somos gamers, excepción, eh, de pronto no son naturales, eh, para ellos sí lo son, entonces hemos encontrado esos patrones y hemos empezado a comunicar en torno a hacer reactive content a los patrones que encontramos okay. en ellos. And why does it work? Why is it so effective? Because so far there's been a crave for reactive content, you have to always be listening with net base, you have to be watching the news, you have to be, you know, knowing what's happening today or what's going to happen tomorrow. Why is that so important? Exactly right. Okay. So let's take one step back. What is reactive content? It's here and now. It's very important that we know that. Why is that important that it's here and now? It creates an emotional connection with our audiences because we're all living the same thing. Okay. It's because we can all relate to the same topic and we all have an opinion on that same topic. So if Tom Hanks run or runs naked through Gulfstream, we're all going to probably want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a topic of conversation every day. Okay, it's context. Okay, I know what that. Well, I know what happened. Why does reactive content work? It focuses on quality rather than quantity. Okay, the quantity needs to be on the engagement, not on our efforts and posting. We have to find positive posts. We have to find uh, the posts that people are talking about or want to talk about. What's going to happen next and what's happening today, not what happened yesterday. It helps you. It, it, it helps your brand stay relevant. Like what you said, it's relevant. Okay, it helps you connect with new customers because you're going to be asking people to join a conversation, or they're going to be already part of a conversation that you are joining, and they're then going to interact with your brand because you're talking about the same things that they're living with, living through. Um, not only that, but something that we never really take into consideration, but it extends the shelf life of our other content. Every day we're in this room, we're thinking about new content to post tomorrow, the next day, the next month. That's the content that we're, we're trying to figure out in here. But we can use less of that content so it stays active for a longer amount of time if we start using the content that the world outside is actually generating for us. So every day we get a new post that we can post today. So the post I was going to post today, we can save it for tomorrow. So, it, so my content that we thought about in here lasts longer. So I don't have to create 70 posts for next week. We just have to keep listening to what's happening outside so we can create posts based on the content that's being generated for us. Couple of things to keep in mind for, 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 for reactive content. 
you don't have to be the first. This is normally a misconception. People always try to, okay, well, we weren't the first person to talk about it, therefore we're just copying. No, not necessarily. It's a conversation, it's not a race. Okay, just make sure that it's, you just have to take into consideration that it is a timely issue. So you don't wanna to be too late to go into the conversation because people already aren't interested. So you just wanna make sure that you, you're aware of what people are talking about, aware of what people are interested in, and start joining in that conversation and engage with them so that they can participate. The sooner the better, of course. Be selective. I'm sure that if Tom Hanks did run across Gulfstream naked, maybe brands like Charmin or maybe brands like uh, maybe Reebok wouldn't really be interested. But maybe brands like Trojan condoms would. So you have to understand that the, just because it's happening and everybody's talking about it doesn't mean that it's relevant to our brands. Doesn't mean that we have to put our brand name on top of that content because it could affect brand equity, okay? And brand character, especially. So you have to be very careful about that kind of stuff. So be selective. Don't panic. There's always a panic. We're not being reactive enough. We're not doing it. It's like, well, of course not. Why? Because we don't have the processes implemented in the agency to be reactive enough. So that's what we have to do. We have to take steps and, and, and train ourselves on how to accept reactive content into, the, into our workflow on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So let's go through a couple of steps. Before we can think about a process, we gotta break that process up into three different aspects. You have a before, a during, and an after. Okay, and that's, everything is very important. So let's talk about a little bit before something happens. How can you be ready? How can you be, okay, we are reactive, so how am I gonna know when something's gonna happen? How am I gonna know? Well, you're not gonna know when, when it's gonna happen, but you're gonna be ready for when it does. And when you're ready gonna be does, you're gonna be, you're gonna be there on time so that you can create things efficiently and so it doesn't cost blood, okay, for the agency to generate a video. It doesn't, for just because Tom Hanks ran across naked doesn't mean we have to go running across and filming, no. We're already ready with the tools. Work up some templates, okay? This is important. We can make video templates to where we can just fill in the blanks. So when something did happen, all we gotta do is get a couple of images off of the internet and just plug them in, okay? Put a little background music and we're done. It doesn't have to be the biggest video production. We can have posts already set up for that kind of content. All we gotta do is fill in the blanks, but let's have it ready. Let's have a database of posts for reactive content or audio or video, okay? Oh shit, okay. <laughs> sorry, I hit exit. No, you're looking at the other slides. <laughs> okay. I hit the wrong button. Sorry. Okay. Do your research. Uh, let me remind myself what this is all. Okay, uh, certain amount of information we're gonna need. Uh, let's sort of always end it over there. Okay, uh, shortly after, okay. Very important. If we're doing our research, we can always we don't have to wait until the, until, until the game is over, let's say for example, to, to post what we wanna post. If we're doing our research, we can just make sure that we know that the Super Bowl is going to take place every day, every time, every same time at the end of every year, and we can be there ready because we know what information they're going to be talking about. We don't know what information specifically, but we know the format. They're gonna know what, okay, what the score was, that you're gonna have two teams, that you're gonna have, um, you're, there's gonna be an ESPN, there's gonna be uh, an MVP, there's gonna be the who got the trophy, there's gonna be what the trophy's called. There's a lot of content that you already know that they're going to talk about, but you just gotta fill in also the blanks. So you're just gonna say, okay, so what are the team names? Great, so we'll just plug it in. What are the team logos? These are the team logos. But you already know what the trophy looks like. You already know this, so be prepared, make it ready. Be, you can do that beforehand. You don't have to wait till it's already, already happening. You can be prepared. So Mother's Day just passed. Everybody a week before started talking about Mother's Day, so we started doing our research. Okay, what are we gonna do about Mother's Day? Let's have a brainstorming session, let's do that. So then when we're ready, we know what to do. So the idea is just keep thinking forward instead of waiting for it, the day to come. Get stuff signed off. What you want to do, if, if something's gonna happen, what, if, if, let's say the Super Bowl is coming around, let's get a couple of options of reactive media and get all of them signed off, okay? A couple of different angles to look at it. So that we can, and we'll get it signed off by Michelle, we'll get it signed off by David, get it signed off by me, get it signed off by Javier. Anybody that you, you feel that needs to approve the content, get, get more than one concept signed off. 
so that when the time comes, we pick the most relevant one or the one that <coughs> people want to hear about. So get more stuff signed up, not just one concept and then you only go out with one post and you realize that was the wrong post. Community managers ready. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get engagement. You're gonna get conversations. You wanna be there to be able to respond. So make sure that they're ready, knowing that, okay, we're probably gonna have to be on our cell phones looking at night to see for, you know, if anybody ma made any positive or negative comments on, the, on, on, on that post because you know, we wanna generate those relationships. We wanna engage conversations. So don't wait for the next day to come along. Answer them, you know, answer them responsibly, answer them timely. And make sure you're prepared for the for a lot of for a lot of uh, a lot of flow of conversation. While things are happening, okay, monitor social media. Um, there's an abundance of opinions, so analyze them. You really want to see that. You want to see that people are going to be uh, commenting poorly on one thing. Things people are going to be coming commenting positively on something. So what is it that people do want to hear? What people don't want to hear? So that when you do try to post or boost your posts, you want to make sure that you're boosting the things that people want to hear, not what they don't want to hear. Okay. See who else is on the ball. This is one of the more important things. Um, there's a good example here. If it's like Simon Cowell from X Factor got egged, well, let's not talk about him getting egged. Let's talk about the egg. Let's say, okay, let's make a post talking about the different. It says right here. There's a, the different woke forms and 17 different ways you can throw an egg. It doesn't have to be exactly about what happened. It could be around what happened. So you can get create different types of conversations because the saturation of everybody else talking about the same thing isn't gonna benefit you. you. What you wanna do is you wanna tag onto the conversation but generate a different topic. Okay, so it, it could be, okay, uh, maybe find the video of him getting egged and make it out of Legos. You know, so that people can, hey, I like that, that's funny. It doesn't have to be the same conversation I had yesterday. It's a different way of looking at it and I'm laughing about it. Work in real time. While something's happening, you could be creating posts. Okay, while it's happening. You're watching the Super Bowl, the Mundial, you're watching, the, the, you know, you're watching a baseball game, whatever's happening. You can be writing down everything that's happening as it's happening and then just get ready. As soon as, as, soon as it's ready, you post it. What happens is, is you don't want to wait for the very last minute to dry, write everything down because there's going to be way too much. You're going to waste too much time. Do it as it's happening. Just start. Just just work in real time. After something happened, this is very important. Okay, get the nod. What is this? Um, we had this conversation last week. Um, if you post something, you want to make. If you're going to post something and it's something that happened in real in the real world, you want to make sure that it's legal. Okay, I'm not saying legal against the law. I'm legal with the brand that you're posting it for. Okay, you want to make sure that you know, have it reviewed. If you have to get a lawyer to review it, that's fine. But that's not the idea. You know, make sure that the, the you know the superiors in the agency make sure that or somebody or the brand strategist or the creative director they see it and they make sure. Look, it's it's okay. It's kosher. Like there's no other competing brands in the background. If you're using somebody's face, make sure that it's okay to use their face. Like if you saw it's Tom Hanks running down the street naked and you took a picture of him and you wanted to post that, Tom Hanks might have a problem with that. You know, so you might want to see if it's okay or not. You don't want to put a photo of a Lamborghini with a watch and then it's, that Lamborghini has a logo on it and then now World of Watches has a problem. So you want to make sure you get that nod, okay? Make sure that's the okay. Okay, put it out there. This is something that happens, I've noticed it. Well, I didn't have access to the Facebook account to post it. Doesn't matter. 20 other people do, okay? It's very important. Look, we all have each other's phone numbers. We all have each other's emails. Get it posted. We're all active in reactive market and reactive content, everybody. Because what you heard, I didn't hear. And what I heard, you didn't hear. But we're all part of it and we're all going for that same goal. So whatever it is that you hear and you don't have access to the Facebook page or to the blog, Carolina does, okay? And you have her phone number. Call her. You won't believe what I just saw. We need to get this up now, okay? Let's work as a team. So that make sure that we're being reactive on a timely fashion. Assess the audience's reaction. Okay, again, your social networks are invaluable. Okay, try to convert every single discussion, whether positive or negative, into in, into an opportunity to, gener to develop a relationship. Everything. Don't get stuck on the negative on the negative comments. Try to turn them into a conversation with that person, so that they're aware that it's not the positive message, but this is what we consider and and listen to their opinions. Okay, 
take those reactions and generate conversation. Make a relationship with whoever it is that's discussing it. Oops, I hit it again. I hate this. All the buttons are so close together. Okay, update or expand. This is uh, one of the last slides. Um, sometimes, sometimes reactive content will end up getting lost in the past. Like, okay, well that happened months ago, so nobody cares anymore. Well, you can bring it back. I mean, it doesn't matter, you just twist it a little bit. Bring it up, expand on it. How can we use it? Analyze the content that still exists. Because it will be there for as long as you keep it online. It doesn't matter. If it's a blog, it's still online, it didn't die. What if it's still relevant? What if it's people are still having problems understanding um, uh, why Tom Hanks ran across the street? I don't know. Is it necessary? Is it can you can you relate it to a different topic that we're that, that's happening today? Can you, can you connect the dots? Is it something that we can expand on? It can we boost it? Can we do something to just bring it back so that people can start engaging again? It's just a matter of just looking at it, you know, analyzing if it's necessary to be able to use it if we do need it or anything. Just make sure that not everything needs to be buried in the past that you can always try to expand or, or, or update any information that we have already used. Here's some examples of pretty good uh, reactive content. This was Heineken's approach to Apple iPhone's bending problem. Okay, they come up with a post that's uh, yeah, a post on Twitter that says, no worries, it happens to them all. Okay, it happens to us all the time. So they show the cap that's bent. That's just their way of reacting to it. Okay. They don't specifically say anything about the iPhone. They don't. They have a different approach, but they know what they're talking about. People love it. Everyone remembers the dresses. This is Monster's dress uh, approach to the dress. This is something that we never really heard about, but it was a big deal in Europe. They found horse meat in burgers. And this is a big deal. So what did Minnie Cooper do? It says we have, okay, beef with a lot of horses hidden in. So that's their way of taking it. Do you remember this? This is the, the what was it called? The putty panel, putty panel, whatever it's called. Whatever. Um, the, that's a very nice you know, interpretation of it. They use it, a negative message, to create interesting conversation. Thank you very much.